Hi all, DLAS here again. So it's uh, been quite a while since my last video, so apologies for that, but I've been uh, in the process of actually trying to test out and learn some of the 3D modeling softwares to figure out which one is the best one that has enough functionality to do what I want to do, but isn't overly complicated to learn, which may be a bit of a unicorn since I don't seem to be finding that, but um, I think I'm narrowing in on at least ones that will do the functionality I want but still be relatively simplistic. Um, I just keep getting distracted with various fun things with it as I find them in the process. Um, which brings me to this video. What this video is is actually going to be about um, some functionality I found in the program that comes actually with Windows 10. Uh, it's called Paint 3D. Uh, it's a program which has replaced Paint. Both Paint is still available but this is a new version that they've come out with. It's got a really cool functionality I'd like to show. So uh, uh, stick around and I will go through a bit of a tutorial on that uh, next. Okay, so the program I want to show is called Paint 3D. It actually comes as part of uh, Windows 10. Uh, if it doesn't, it should be available in the Microsoft App Store. But what the functionality is within this that I wanted to show is Magic Select. And what that does is allows you to select an item within a photo and actually crop that item out in a very easy way. Now it's something you've always been able to do, but it's just been very tedious in the past and I was quite surprised and happy to see how easy they've made it. So for example, if you have a picture where you need to use a picture for something but you don't want stuff that's in the background or you just want to pick a particular object out of the picture to use in something, whether it's a presentation or just to have some fun with, this gives you a very easy and quick ability to do it. And so what we do is once we have the picture loaded, we go to Magic Select. And it has a little uh, wizard here that kind of walks you through the process. But the first step is to kind of constrict it down to what you want to cut out of the image. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that's going to restrict it down to that. So for example, if I want my shoulders as part of this image, I don't want to drag this down because that'll then cut those out. So I want to leave this in this instance for the size of the whole picture. Just click Next. And then what it's going to do is try to automatically guess at what the instance is in your image. So surprisingly it actually figured that I wanted to keep my face and so it highlighted that. But what it's going to try and do is it's going to go based on the edges that it finds. So it didn't include my shoulders here because it just followed the skin tone. So you have these two buttons, Add and Remove. So add is selected and what I'm going to do is just draw in the regions I want to include and then it'll add those. And actually it does a pretty impressive job of guessing. Now it gets thrown here because my hair color is the same as the person sitting behind me so it doesn't know what to select there. So in that case I want to select remove and then just copy down along and it'll cut that out. and then little pieces that it leaves, you just select those. Now because that hair did match, it unselected this also. But if I go back and select that, it seems to have enough intelligence to know that I don't want to add that back in, I just want to add that part. Now you can roll your mouse to zoom in, which makes my face even bigger, sorry for that. But if you wanted to try and select more, the one thing I found though is if you start trying to select individual hairs or parts of hair it gets a bit confused and you can end up with what looks a bit messy because now it's including the background in some case and depending on depending on what you want to include you may or may not want to mess around with that but you can literally zoom in as far as you want to try and select things uh, doesn't really make it that much better it's still kind of doing a bit of a random job but like anything in Windows you can also undo to back out if you decide you don't want to do that. No, I can't remember how far I went. There. So once you have the item selected that you want, you can just click Done. And what it'll do is it'll actually isolate that now as a new object. And so like many packages nowadays, or especially 3D packages, what it does is create layers. So we now have two different layers here that we can then move this around on that. Now one thing that might be kind of cool with this, which I haven't really tried much, but you could use this and it will try and fill in the background just by guessing what, what was on this, you know, guessing by pulling in the stuff that was around the image. But if you did leave this on here and saved it, you would actually create a bit of a 3D um, perception on the image. So if I just save this image and 
as is with both the background still there it would kind of pop that first part out and give it a bit of a 3d but I don't want to do that I just want to take this so if I just copy this and there may be a more eloquent way to do this I kind of brute force it but I just go then and say new and if I paste I now have the image I wanted without any background but the key there is if you don't want the background you can select this canvas button up here and turn transparent canvas on and that way you just have the image you want and then before I save it I just drag that down a little bit to make sure that this box includes the whole image because that's what it's going to save and then you can just go to save save image and we'll just call that the lost no background now I guess part of the reason what you know why I found this useful is in things like where if you're doing a PowerPoint or you're doing something where you need to include that image what you can do is if you insert that picture then you now have it without the background so whatever the background is in in the PowerPoint or in whatever you're using is going to show up and you'll just have the image you want to select um, so I, I just thought it was kind of cool now one thing is where you will see a bit of a difference is if you have a picture that has a lot of noise in the background and so we'll pick this one which was me at the launch of my new wardrobe and my uh, fashion fashion consulting career short-lived as it was um, so here we've got a lot of stuff going on in the background and that's what makes it harder for it to figure out what to select so if we go through the same process and since I do want to cut this down because I don't want it to trying to look at all of this stuff and I just want to get myself you can see with all of this other stuff going on and a lot of different colors and a lot of different textures it had a really hard time deciding what it was supposed to include but again that's where this ability to go through and relatively quickly without being too precise pick things and have it include them is what again I think just makes it a really cool piece of software I don't often say that about Microsoft packages but in this case I have to give some credit that it did a pretty good job and I'm gonna go kinda quick because I'm sure people don't want to see me just randomly trying to pick some old picture so I'll go pretty quick but I guess the one thing let me just get rid of the and I just amputated my foot but for the heck of it I'm just gonna go with it so you don't have to keep watching me but you can have some fun with it because in this case if I copy this and say I was to go find some other image something fun like a beach and I ended up looking like Godzilla on the beach let me come on, make that smaller You can basically put your image, in this case my cross-eyed, eye-glinting eye self, on the image. And then when you save it, you can basically, again, have some fun, do some random stuff. Uh, one of the other ones I had some fun with, which just annoyed people at work. But you can basically do it with anything. It just depends if you get the, get the images you want and play around. So yeah, again, relatively short one. Maybe helpful for people, maybe not helpful for people. I thought it was actually a pretty cool functionality that just exists for free. Um, so I guess if you have any comments, you want to comment on my wardrobe, make fun of me, you can do that in the comments section. If these are helpful at all, subscribe or send me recommendations of other things you'd like to see me fumble through. But um, yeah, I'll just keep plugging along. Thank you and have fun.